السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى And may the peace and blessings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى be upon his beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His companions and all those who follow in their guidance My dear respected brothers and sisters Ibrahim ibn Adham Rahimahullah was a tabi'i that was born in Mecca and he lived in a household in which his father was very, very wealthy. After Ibrahim ibn Adham grew up, he chose to move away from the wealthy lifestyle of living with his father and rather live a lifestyle of simplicity, seeking knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibrahim ibn Adham, of course, grew to be a known scholar in Islam. In fact, Ibrahim ibn Adham was such yani, a recognized and honored tabi'i that the scholars, they said about Ibrahim ibn Adham that had he been one of the companions, he would have been one of the noble companions this is yani, how yani, God-fearing Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, he was, and how much he, stri he strove in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, a man, he came to Ibrahim ibn Adham, who used to commit a lot of sin, uh, and he would repent and then commit sin again. So he went to Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, and he said, O oh, Imam, I have a problem. I commit sin, and then I repent. But then I commit the same sin again and again and again, and I can't stop committing sin. What am I going to do? So Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, he looked at him, this wise man, and he said to him, you can continue to commit sin so long as you can fulfill one of five things. He said, what are they, O Imam? This sinner, he said, what are they? Please tell me because this is a problem for me. Ibrahim ibn Adham rahimahullah, he said, he said, the first is continue to commit sin, no problem, so long as you don't do so in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kingdom. Do not do it in anywhere where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he owns it. The man looked at Ibrahim ibn Adham rahimahullah, he said, subhanallah, and is there anything or anywhere that doesn't belong to Allah? Everything that exists is Allah's kingdom. This all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who al Malik. He owns everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, this is not going to do our imam. What is the second? He said, subhanallah. So Ibrahim ibn Adam said, subhanallah, you live in Allah's kingdom, yet you have the audacity to commit sin and, dis and you know, and he displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, what is the second, O imam? He said, the second is, you may commit sin, but you must do so in a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot see you. He said, subhanallah. And is there anywhere that I can go where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot see me? Is there anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not see? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is al-basir. He hears and sees everything. He is a samir There's nothing that is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I go somewhere that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't see or doesn't hear? He said, SubhanAllah, you know that Allah hears and sees everything that you do, yet you still have the audacity to commit sin before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Oh Ibrahim, oh Imam, these two are not going to work. What is the third? He said, the third is, you can continue to commit sin. However, when you do so, you must not eat from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot eat from the provisions and the rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can do this, commit sin, no problem. He said, subhanallah. And is there any provisions except that they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not a razzaq? And he is the only one who is a razzaq, the one who provides, the one who, who gives blessings and provisions? He said, oh, Ibrahim. And then Ibrahim ibn Adham looked at him and said, subhanallah, you ate from Allah's blessings. Yet you still have the audacity to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and commit sin. He said, oh, Imam, the first three are not going to work. What is the fourth? 
He says the fourth is you can continue to commit sin and continue to do so until the angel of death comes to you. And when he comes to you, say to him, say to the angel of death, give me some time so I can repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then come and take my life. The man looked at Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, he said, Oh Imam, and is there anything that is going to stop the angel of death from taking my life when it has been commanded to do so by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And does anyone know when death is going to come to him and when the angel of death is going to come and take that person's soul? I don't know. Nobody knows. He said, subhanallah, you know that death can come to you at any time. And you know that the angel of death can come and extract your soul at any given time. And there's no warning for it. Yet you still have the audacity to commit sin. He said, oh, Imam, these four things are not going to work. What is the fifth? So Ibrahim ibn Adham said, okay, the fifth one is continue to commit sin. Continue to commit sin. And when you die and the Zabaniya, the angels, they come to drag you to hellfire. Tell them to stop and not drag you to the hellfire, rather allow you to go to Jannah. He said, Subhanallah, O oh Imam, and these angels that are commanded by Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and that will, those that will never ever disobey the command of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, do you think they're going to listen to me and not drag me to the hellfire if Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded them to drag me to the hellfire? He said, Subhanallah. You know this. Ibrahim ibn Adham said, SubhanAllah, you know this. Yet you still have the audacity to commit sin. The man looked at Ibrahim ibn Adham and he said, SubhanAllah, you are right. I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I shall stop committing these sins so long as it is in my power. I will do my utmost to stop committing sins, inshaAllah ta'ala. So you see, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is likewise our situation. These five things that Ibrahim ibn Adham rahimahullah mentioned, they apply to each and every one of us. So how is it that we continue to sin and sin and sin knowing these five things that Ibrahim ibn Adham rahimahullah, he mentioned? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who hear the right as right and adopt it in our lives and take the wrong as wrong and take it out of our lives. Allahumma ameen. آمين آمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته